Right, it's set up day at Star Wars Celebration Europe 2016. Not too much to be said, a lot of people walking around in high vis and lots of exciting looking things going on. Most of it will start tomorrow. I have two passes, one is the Exhibitors Pass with Finn on it and the other one is my special R2-D2 Builders Club Pass. So here's the setup of the blade stand which we're still sticking together. There's a lot of mess to be cleaned up and bits and pieces to stick onto the stand that we made on the inkjet printer. Yes, there's 24 panels. We printed them all in the office and stuck them on with Velcro. Before Blades are exhibiting, I actually bought my own Saturday ticket, which comes with this exclusive lanyard, which you have to pay extra for, which is a lightsaber and a nice red silky lanyard. And also the exclusive t-shirt for Star Wars Celebration Europe. So Blades Toys are sponsoring the R2-D2 Builders Club, and we're providing inflatables for them to do races for members of the public to have a go for charity. And this is the R2-D2 Builders Stand. We've got all of the droids, setting up today. <laughs> Over here is my 3D printed R6 droid next to a C3PO in progress. There are lots of droids, lots of information about droids. And on the other side of the stand here we've got BB-8 builders. So we've got my BB-8 and some other in-progress droids and some almost complete droids as well. We've even got one BB-8 made from Lego. <laughs> Are you excited about Star Wars Celebration yet? I'm phenomenally excited, I'm sweating. Good, and how is your Yoda? It just needs to work oh, on his right. head a bit and his lightsaber, but I think he'll then be ready for the battle. Super, and here are the others for the races and we've got this big banner. R2DC Builders Drive a Droid Arena, sponsored by Blaze Toys. Share to win. The carpet is going down because it's 5 p.m. on the day of setup when all the aisles are supposed to be clear. And we're nearly there, good. We're staying on the yacht because it was only five pounds less to stay in one of those. It's permanently moored here and Excel is just over there. So it's only about five minutes walk away. Right, here's my rather nice room on the yacht. Look at this. Let's see what's outside the, the porthole. Oh, not much. Excel's up there, right in the distance. But it's not that far. So pretty nice altogether. We're in the box because that's where you go. And I'm here with Daniel and Ian. Hello! And what, Hello. what, what drinks have you got? I've got a uh, pint of Foster's. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a James so I That's a nice one. An invisible drink. Yeah. yeah. Slow down, you've had too many. Come on, relax. Please. Not it's not when the show hasn't started yet, by the way. <laughs> I guess you say what can make me feel this way. R2, R2, R2. Talking about R2. BB8. It's the morning of Friday and the show's just opening and all of the people are still in massive queues all the way down the concourse which we've come through because everyone had to go through security including exhibitors but we're getting ready. A lot of very enthusiastic people have just run past us to go to the queue for the Star Wars exclusive store 
which is all the pre-release stuff that's not out yet, where there's another queue. So that's now the end of the queue for the store, which is backed up all the way to here from over there. Great. At least we have a captive audience to demo all the products. Hi! Right, I'm here Rage More Roberts. Her Facebook page is Rage Against the Sewing Machine and she's cosplaying with us for three days to help promote the products. I was quite busy for most of the show and I didn't get much time to see any panels but I did manage to get on the guest list for the droid building panel and this is featuring Oliver Steeples and Lee Towersy who were members of the R2-D2 Builders Club and then they basically joined Pinewood and built R2-D2 for the movie. Also Josh Lee and Matt Denton who basically built all of the BB-8 puppets in the movie and the stage droid. This is quite a good panel, it's on YouTube, in fact I've put the link in the description. They didn't really want much filming in this panel. Uh, probably so there weren't loads of dodgy copies going around so I took some still photos, it was an hour anyway so it was quite a lot to film. 
But uh, there we go. I can't remember who the host was, but um, it was a pretty good panel, and they actually revealed in the end how the stage droid the BB-8 actually works. Um, but I've got quite a lot of pictures. There's Oliver, some other um, droids. So there's a big screen up. That's why this is at a funny angle. But as I say, the whole YouTube uh, properly produced version is in the Star Wars YouTube channel, and I've put the link in the description, so don't forget to check that out. They brought out various droids, and uh, there's various behind-the-scenes photos. There's Matt and Josh. Uh, Matt, of course, has been in my channel with his Mantis robot, so check out those videos. That's a giant hydraulic hexapod you can ride in. Um, Josh brought out his concept uh, kind of puppet for how they were going to puppet BB-8 in the movie and drove it around. It's handmade. It was the first one they ever made to um, work out how to do the animatronics for BB-8. So nice little model. And uh, obviously all these pictures with the uh, arm here. And we can see, of course, that BB-8 is single axis and the head is on a stick, which is why the bottom of the silver ring stays stationary on BB-8's head and the top turns above it. Here's uh, some footage of it in the desert. Um, here's some of the moulding and stuff behind the scenes at Pinewood. I don't think these photos have been made public before. This is the photo that was made public before, uh, which turned out to be the Wiggler, which is the droid which stays still and the head moves all around. You can see the stick coming out of the top there. Again, sorry for the slanted photo. It is, of course, um, on a big screen and I took a photo of the screen and I wasn't sitting quite in the middle. So there we can see the head on the top. Um, and so on. That's the inside of the Wiggler. And this is the concept for the first puppeteered one, which was the trike that's got two wheels behind it. They showed a video of a physics simulation where you could drive it with physical joysticks and it actually um, drove around in virtual reality to check it would work before they built it and they could work out all the motor torque. This is a bit of a dodgy shot of some moving film of it in a uh, basically a container of sand to test driving on sand and other terrain. These are some of the first prototypes they built. They then brought the actual droid out on stage. This is the trike. You can see the trike assembly behind it. And they explained about how this was used in the movie. And they had left and right hand versions with the single axis for lining up the best shot. So that got driven quite a lot. Uh, there's some more of it. Um, and they actually revealed what was inside the red carpet BB-8. So this is the mechanism. There was a video of it moving. As I say, that's all in the actual presentation, and I put the link in the description. So it appears to be basically a pendulum which has the batteries in, and that spins around. That's the flywheel, and it's um, an axle drive that goes along the middle there. So fairly similar to my version 3, um, although I've put the motors in different places and things, but essentially it's the same axis. Pretty sure there's had a higher budget and is more efficient and doesn't burn so much power. The interesting thing here is you can see the head control arm. These cords that are going up are like basic bicycle brake cords, so they're Bowden tubes, um, and the motors to control the head control arm are right in the bottom, but it looks like the rotating mechanism is uh, actually a small servo. Not sure whether it's a Hobby RC or a Dynamics or a what. And it looks like five to six magnets in the head on the head control arm. So it's quite interesting seeing that. As I say, there is video in the actual presentation in the Star Wars YouTube channel that you should watch and you can see all this rotating and moving around. This is one of the first concepts. Um, and then they actually brought out the real stage droid. And I was sitting right in the front row because I got in first. So um, it was about 15 feet away from me, but I wasn't allowed to touch it or measure it, unfortunately. Um, and it went back in its box afterwards and got taken away. There we go, that's the final shot of that. So don't forget to check that link out in the description to this video. It's the end of Saturday and we've got beers on the stand. It's all shut now. It's been extremely busy and we've sold lots of stuff, haven't we? Oh, lots of stuff. Many units. Reason for a celebration. Not many left for tomorrow, so I don't know what we're going to do. Probably just dance and entertain everyone. Alright, but not much time for droid driving. I did a little bit. Hopefully I'll get to actually look around the show for half an hour tomorrow or something like that. But it's Saturday night! Woohoo! Cheers! Give me a little flag! What are you doing? I'm dead. Is it a lying down selfie because BB-8 is dead as well? Yeah. But I can't get a minute because his head is so huge! show opening time on Sunday morning and already there's tons of people running for the store already. I'm a bit late because I had to walk the long way round and quite a few people heading in.
is pretty much what it's like all the time, constantly, constantly playing with inflatables, it's great. The other really interesting thing I managed to get into, there was a bit of a queue but it wasn't too bad, was the Propel show. So this was an exclusive product launch at Celebration for a Star Wars quadcopter product or range of products. Millennium Falcon, X-Wing, TIE Fighter and Speed Bike. And they put on this massive show, one of the huge halls at Excel was totally blocked out for this. 200 people could watch at a time and there was still a massive queue. So they had this massive Death Star uh, trench set up. And they had loads of pilots, some of them are hiding down in the trench, you can just see at the front. There was a laser show, loads of stuff, and they basically reenacted scenes from Star Wars with these quadcopter products. They're going to be premium products, they thought about £250 to £300 in money to buy. Um, they're extremely high quality plastic ships. Um, they don't have massive holes cut through them to let air through, like the Air Hogs range. I can't really tell you too much about how they work, they were um, basically displayed at the end but there was no photography um, the rotors are underneath but the Millennium Falcon doesn't have huge holes in so they've got some extremely interesting technology to allow that to fly it turned out that Propel, the boss of Propel um, actually watches my YouTube channel and he came out and showed me one in person um, but there was no photography and I'm not going to tell you how it works because he didn't really want to reveal that publicly just yet it's a pre-release product so look out for that when it comes out, I'm not sure when it's going to be but uh, yeah, extremely interesting, sort of high end of the market. Really nice packaging with lights and sound in as well, so really premium product. Right, I'm here with Oliver Steeples from RCDC Builders, who was on episode 7, who's on the panel as earlier in this video. Hi guys! So this is some footage of us on the live stage where they had the big screen and they did interviews throughout the day. You'll have to excuse the shaky camera work, I was trying to film it and then I realised I should be paying attention. So we went on there to talk about Blades radio controlled inflatables, they had a nice Millennium Falcon set and they uh, mic'd us up and everything and I'm not sure it's in the live stream in the YouTube channel. There was quite a big Rogue One uh, display in the South Hall, which was the opposite hall to the one we were in. So they had lots of the costumes there. There is a Death Trooper, there we go, a couple of those. I guess these are the original actual things from the film, rather than replicas. When we were in Nuremberg Toy Fair last year we saw some, but I'm not sure if they were the real ones. Definitely the BB-8 and Ray were replicas. There's some Stormtroopers. And a while ago someone leaked a picture of a new type of helmet and this looks like it is actually a character in the film. So that's what that is. But overall the show was very busy. Most of the day it was like this. It was shoulder to shoulder. We were allowed to drive droids around the show apparently but I wouldn't really fancy trying it with all these people, especially uh, BB-8 tripping everyone over. That's the giant at, -at and the TIE Fighter that it has there. <laughs> what happens at the end of the trade show? <laughs> All the, all the inflatables get crushed. 